<coughs> I've slept better. I've definitely also slept worse. But uh, if you want to, you know, find out what it takes to survive and uh, all that good stuff, camping, survival camping, uh, <laughs> then uh, we need to get out and train. And that's what I've done with this shelter because uh, now I know how to make it, which materials I need, how to measure the sticks here with my arms and so on, so I know which lengths I need for this diameter and blah blah blah. I verified we can actually make a fire in here without any bigger problems. I could make it a lot larger and so on. So that's what I mean with the get out and train and get it done and do something awesome. Alright guys, welcome back to this channel and welcome to Survive Russia. Today's topic is a little bit uh, of a sad topic. We are in our house, you can see. Some of you guys have asked if we moved into the house, yes. But uh, anyway, uh, a young guy from Belgium, 22 years old, recently died in uh, Lapland, in Sweden, central, northern central Sweden. That's quite a ways up. I'm very familiar with that terrain because I'm from Denmark and uh, Sweden is our neighbor. So I've been there many, many times and spent a long time there. Sometimes up to 19 days at a time, actually. <clears throat> so, I would like to say before we start that uh, if some of his uh, uh, relatives should be watching this video, I'm not trying to put this young guy down in any ways. I'm not trying to better myself through this video, but uh, I think that I can definitely come up with some uh, advice to other guys who go out and uh, do something which is a little bit above their skill level. So, uh, Please bear with me if you watch this video and you are relative to Storm de Beul, I think he was called, Storm de Beul from uh, Belgium. But we'll, let's uh, start with uh, just have a moment of silence for the young man and his relatives. All right, let's get on with it. So, <clears throat> this young man is a YouTuber or was a YouTuber. He has a channel called Stormy Outdoors or something like this. You can go and check it out. Uh, he'd been uh, traveling around for months in uh, Lapland, uh, close to a location called Jokmok, which is uh, a little bit south of a location called Kiruna, which is, this is a very heavy, it's very difficult terrain. Very, can get very cold up there and so on, but it's a forested area. He was caught in a snowstorm. He's been, as I said, he's been hiking there for months. So he must have had uh, you know, autumn gear with him, not winter gear. <clears throat> he was caught in a snowstorm, minus six Cs. According to the wind uh, chill factor, it must have been around minus 15, minus 20 Cs. And uh, he had cell phone coverage. He was a uh, one day's hike from his car. And uh, as I said, he had cell phone coverage, so he actually called a friend. He also called his grandmother or wrote his grandmother. I'm not really sure about that. But uh, to his friend, uh, he anyway communicated that tonight is going to get even worse, Jesus Christ. To his grandmother, he said that, uh, yeah, situation is bad, but I'll survive, you know. Okay, so I checked out his channel. I could see that uh, he was not that skilled of a guy, really. Like, no, I'm not trying to say anything bad about him, but this is just a fact. This, uh, this, this you can see really, really easily. What basically happened was, he was caught in a snowstorm and he didn't have the equipment for it, obviously. He must have had tent, cooking gear, an axe. He uses an axe often in his videos and so on. And uh, basically he was found with uh, frostbitten legs and uh, lower legs anyway, some uh, scratches on his lower legs and a broken nose. He had a backpack with him which is in which he had a sleeping bag and a toothbrush. The toothbrush have most likely been there. I don't think he have uh, brought the toothbrush with him, but he definitely have panicked and taken his uh, sleeping bag with him in the backpack. Not a bad choice really. So since I get a lot of questions from, from guys if I want, if I cannot do some videos of basic survival, which I actually have a playlist on which I'm working on, and uh, some guys asking advice for this and that sometimes, and I'm kind of a, 
I won't call myself a winter camping expert. I, I, I prefer the Russian term, which is a winter camping specialist. Specialist is a better word because I do have some experience in winter camping for sure, right? So what I want to do is to give uh, some of you guys a little bit of advice uh, on background of uh, this very unfortunate event because this young man was definitely not up for the task. And uh, his relatives were wondering what happened to him and so on. And uh, I think I have an idea what happened. I think that uh, he at some point realized that he could not stay in his location. Even as I said, it's a, it was a snowstorm. It's a wooded area, as you can see up at my camp. Even we also had a very heavy storm without snow, but we had a very, very heavy storm here. And uh, regardless of a heavy storm, we don't have much uh, wind on the, on the ground because, as you can see, the shelter here behind me that lifts, uh, this has been standing there for two months, has also stood through the storm. It's also a pine forest, just like up in uh, Lapland. Guys, it's still standing. That is wild. That is crazy wild. So anyway, what, what he, he must have uh, realized he cannot stay. It must have been too cold for him or something. He panicked and he just took his backpack his uh, uh, sleeping bag and just went for it. I don't know if it was daylight or, or nighttime or whatever, if it was completely white out or what, but what I am guessing is that he has either fallen and hit his nose on a rock because there's a lot of rocks up there, or he has been uh, running or something like this and just run straight into a tree and broken his nose. What I get sometimes many comments about is that if I'm out and it's not like minus 27 or 30 and so on, it's minus 5, it's minus 10. Guys say it's not really that cold and so on, but, but uh, freezing temperatures below zero, it's cold, it's cold enough and you can certainly die in, in, in minus 6, obviously, right? And uh, the thing about shelters and so on is that, that uh, many say, yeah, but do this, do that, uh, but... Have you ever tried to sit? Yeah, it's minus 20 outside. I've tried it. It's minus 25, actually. I had like uh, plus 7 degrees in my snow shelter, one of my snow shelter demo videos, right? If you have to sit out a night, because up there the nights are very long. Here the nights are long. They're like 18 hours by now or something like this before it gets the light. If you have to try to sit in a shelter, which is like plus four, plus five, plus seven degrees, and you have to sit there for eight, ten hours, and you don't have any way to get warm, you just sit in your sleeping bag, you will get cold. Some people also say, yeah, you have equipment and so on, so it's not survival, like, it's only survival if you're out and you have absolutely nothing, just like a toothbrush and a roll of toilet paper, then it's survival, right? This young man, he was definitely in a survival situation, he definitely had equipment with him, but the equipment was not up to the task. So I will give advice now on how to train because you always hear me say, get out and train and get it done. And it's not just for fun. Because I do that. I mean, every time I go out, it's kind of a practice or training or experiment. This uh, shelter here behind me was an experiment, right? And I specifically, specifically chose a shelter of this type, plastic teepee, because one of my personal, based on my experience, is that if you have to sit it out in a shelter when it's zero degrees or something raining, you need to have a small fire. You need to be able to warm up. All right. So that's why I came up with that shelter. With that shelter, I built it in September. September 19th, I uploaded the video. So I've been checking out the shelter ever since. And uh, the other day, we went and we made a controlled camp because I had a old campsite up there, right? I had some uh, logs that I could put on fire and so on. And uh, I also had a comment that it would be much harder if I didn't have these logs and so on. But since it's an experiment and training and uh, building uh, experience, then you of course have to do it in a controlled manner, right? So you have to know your limitations, you have to train safely. My wife's standing there, she knows that I've been there. Uh, now my sons are coming home. So what I basically wanted to say is, I try, if I test out a new sleep system for winter, I test it outside in the garden. I tested many things out in the garden. 
I will go and I will lay in it for one, two hours, see how it performs when it's minus 20, minus 20 outside. So I don't just take a sleep system with me and think, oh, everything is fine. Something I also mentioned in, in my basic survival videos, sort of some of the very first videos, is check the weather patterns, check the weather on the different uh, kinds of, uh, of from different sources, right? But uh, for example, I would say an option would have been to to make a Siberian log fire maybe. And, and you know, because even as a raging snowstorm, the wind in the forest is not that bad. It's of course bad enough, but you would definitely get by with a Siberian log fire. That's for dang sure. Looks awesome and it feels even more awesome. Looks promising. It's morning, I guess about nine, 10 or something. <clears throat> I've slept better. I've definitely also slept worse. So we have our fire. If he had the right equipment with him, a saw or something to make this, I don't know. He carries often a small hatchet with him, I can see. But uh, that's it's too slow, too much work if you have an incoming storm, right? You need to go out and train in a controlled manner and then uh, build it from there. This, this young man definitely uh, definitely thought that his skill set were better than it was. Let's just say it like that. And that's not to say anything bad about him, but that's just a fact. So I would very much like to thank you guys who have been over and uh, supporting the channel on uh, Boosty, Mars in a Box, 20 Below, Orange Dog, and of course uh, Cosmo Blue over at uh, Subscribestar. Very, very, very awesome of you guys that uh, this, this, that support means more than you realize, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Super awesome. So, there's not much more to say than actually get out on train and get it done. Do something awesome and uh, see you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much for your time.